Do you believe that a person, person's religious beliefs have a place in the public debate? Let's see. Where should we start this time? Let's start with Mark and move this way. Um, interestingly phrased question. Do a person's religious beliefs have a place in their public debate? Um, a qualified no is my answer to that. Um, obviously it has some influence. I, I want to point out, we are not the Christian party. We're the Christian Heritage Party. It's an indisputable fact that Canada was built on a Christian heritage. Every time you sing on Canada, you give testimony to that. Um, we just had Thanksgiving Day. That's by an act of Parliament, a day of thanksgiving to Almighty God. So we can't ignore the facts of history. So you know where I'm coming from, and that's where we, we stand on. So in that sense, the, the philosophy behind it is there, but it's not a particular religious slot that's answering the questions. Public policy questions are built on those foundations. Every candidate has a moral foundation, a moral grounding, and makes their decisions based on that. And what I'm really discouraged to see is parties like the Liberals and the NDP who have pro-life MPs, pro-life candidates who are not allowing them to speak on the basis of their profoundly held conscience beliefs in order to serve for their party. That's right. Thank you. Um, I think um, the Liberal Party has um, put a couple of things up front, uh, such as pro-choice, in order to avoid um, bringing religious belief into parliamentary debates. And so um, that's one thing that um, we're told that um, trying to remember the three things that we have to vote with the party on. One is anything to do with the platform. So anything we propose as a platform. The other thing is uh, votes of confidence. So for instance, the budget. And um, I'm trying to remember the third one. Um, but other than that, we have freedom of, of vote. You know, to vote. Um, with our conscience and to vote with our constituents. So um, I I don't I'm very I, I don't think that uh, I don't have a set of religious beliefs that I bring into my daily life. But I'm very Thank much. You. So my my countdown team. <laughs> I think failed down in the front row. I should have you yell at them. Follow the claw. Uh, yeah, I, I believe that uh, we have to keep uh, church and state separate, but saying that, um, the Conservative Party, I'm very proud to say, is the only party uh, that allows uh, free votes on issues of conscience. Um, you know, Tanya uh, touched on it, that uh, you know, they were told if you're not uh, pro-choice, don't bother running for the Liberal Party. Uh, the NDP is much the same. Uh, and I'm a little bit different than Mark in, in terms that uh, if an issue comes up, that he, and I respect Mark's decision absolutely for that, uh, if an issue comes up that he doesn't morally agree with or couldn't vote in favor of it, uh, the job of a member of parliament is to be uh, the voice of the residents. So it's not my choice or my uh, personal opinion that would uh, guide my vote. It is the personal opinion and the choice of the members in the, of the Foothills riding. Uh, so when these issues do arise, um, we had a couple this year. I try and pull as many residents as I possibly can in the riding, and that will guide how I vote. Sense, a sense of my style. 
where my inclusiveness, my values, myself, and then make a decision that way. And I think only by looking at somebody and how they've actually led change, how they've led big projects and uh, you know, making us get to another place, but inclusivity included, uh, those come from a value center, and that's how decisions are made. Thank you. I was going to say 15 seconds, but you're good to go. You want to rebut this? All right. We can still do that too. This is part of the mix here. So, is that is that your third and final? Is that your third and final in both terms? We're going to use the polls as part of the final. We'll make a deal. Never. All right. We have a rebuttal. I do. This phrase, separation of church and state, is, is one that comes up often, and I believe firmly in that concept. The roles of civil government and of the church are very, very different. I am not here as a church official. I am here seeking representation as a civil officer. But the beliefs, as has been said, in pursuing church and state separation, what we've ended up doing is separating morals from government, and that's exactly why we're in the problems we're in today. Look at the Western world. Look at the countries that refugees are fleeing to now. Every country that has a free market, that has a free government, that has freedom of conscience for all religions or none, is a government that's based on Judeo-Christian ethics. Take a world map, every single one. So we talk about evidence-based policy. The most evidence-based policy around is that human life begins at conception. And that's not an evidence they want to follow. So if you really look at the evidence honestly, it will support the Christian worldview that built Canada into the country that it is right now, because that's what works. Now, what did you say about each country in the world is um, Judeo-Christian, that is, what was the sentence? What you think of as the Western world, yeah. countries with freedom of religion, freedom of conscience, okay. are built on Judeo-Christian. Okay. So I will just include India, um, a country that let all of the Tibetans walk into their country, um, even though they're from a different sect, a different group. Uh, India is wide open. British and mind. <laughs> That's not where they're wide open, never mind. <laughs> okay, 